and welcome to the premiere episode of Mediavania, where three friends from the tabletop gaming industry get together to talk about all things video games, TV, movies, and any sort of pop culture. My name is Marty. My name is Matt. And I'm Nick. Gentlemen, to kick off this entire channel, we just jumped into something today that uh, just kind of came out of nowhere. It's Today is Disney Plus Day. I didn't even know Disney. A... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was a thing, Marty. Disney it's, Plus thing? It's Disney Plus Day. That's great. I mean, yep. I had no idea. I just found, I like, I was going throughout my day, and then, like, everyone started s- saying, did you hear this announcement and this announcement and this announcement? And I was like, I had absolutely no idea. This is new to me. Yeah, I think they dropped a lot more than people were expecting. Right. So what we're going to focus on, they did drop a lot, right? I mean, you see there's a, like a live action Pinocchio and there's going to be a brand new season of Cars, etc. But we're focusing on brand new Marvel shows just to kind of keep this tight and concise because a lot of shows were announced. And if you guys want to, we will just jump uh, just jump straight into it. And they Let's get into it. Released a nice little image here of all the new shows that are going to be coming. The thing is, though, there's a lot of these shows we barely know anything about. This is true. Yeah, there's definitely a few that are on this list that um, are going to be brand new to myself. There's some more, some some that I'm more excited than others. But I say we start things off just in order. We'll go top left and work our way down the list with Secret Invasion. So I don't think they had a trailer for Secret Invasion. Is that right? They showed like uh, uh, Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. All scruffy oh. with a beard and everything. Yeah, and he has like with the eye patch off too. So where's the timeline in this? Like, what, what, where? Did, when does this take place? So what I did find was a, a little short synopsis of maybe some of these shows that people have put together. So uh, allow me to read. Uh, this is a Captain Marvel prequel series of sorts, with Samuel L. Jackson reprising his role as Nick Fury and Ben Mendelsohn as Talos, who appeared in the movie. According to the logline. The series showcases a faction of shape-shifting scrolls who have been infiltrating the Earth for years. So this takes place before Captain Marvel, so this would be late 80s, early 90s? Okay, so it's going to have that Captain Marvel kind of feel to it, though. I feel like it's not going to be a prequel the entire time. It might start off before, but I feel like it's, it's going to maybe be concurrent with the movie and then take place after the secret invasion was like a big deal in the comics. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if if you're not familiar with the comic storyline, like heroes that had gone missing or died or came back and resurrected, they said all those heroes were actually scroll imposters. And so it was like a big, big deal. Like who's a scroll? Who's not. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be interested to see what, how they take that angle with the show. And it makes you wonder, I had thought for sure the next phase is going to really dig into this but now that it seems like it's going to be more of the multiverse thing, I wonder if instead they're going to put all this sort of content mainly on Disney Plus television shows instead of on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, so for me, this one, like, again, not really knowing that storyline outside of Captain, watching Captain Marvel um, and not reading a lot of the old the comic storylines, my excitement level for this one is probably like a five or a six. Like, I'll definitely watch it. Also, just so we know, like, and, and everybody out there knows that Disney Plus has a really great track record so far with Marvel shows. Like I personally don't think feel that they've missed yet. So I think anything has the possibility to be super great, especially if it ties into, you know, the new phase that they're in. Um, but I probably put this at about a five or a six. What about you, Nick? Uh, I'm a little bit higher because I, I love the comic books. Uh, so I'm more like a seven, maybe out of, maybe going out of 10. Uh, but to touch on your point, the squirrels are not bad guys right. in the MCU. And they were very clearly bad guys in the comics. So it'll be interesting to see how they approach that. I'm probably around a six also. Uh, I think it's cool that Nick Fury is going to be back. I can always use more Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the six range. So next on the list is Marvel Zombies. And all it says here, this animated series reimagines the Marvel Universe as a new generation of of heroes battle against an ever-spreading zombie scourge. Yeah, like, so we watched the What If episode of Zombies, right? And I, I think most of us thought that that was going to be all the zombies we were going to get. Um, I Now, this is another series that I didn't read, but I know that it was pretty popular, the Marvel Zombies uh, series in the comics. But I, being animated, being zombies... I have my seven-year-old son loves this kind of stuff. So this kind of, this one's a little higher for me, excitement wise, just to see what kind of stories they bring out. Um, probably about a seven on Marvel zombies for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty high on it too. Uh, 
and as someone who read the comic for this, like they went in a pretty nutso direction in the comics. Um, like they ended up actually devouring Galactus, be- becoming like cosmic zombies. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll we'll see how they go. Um, but it was also the the comic book was also much darker than than what What If showed. So we'll see if they d- adopt a darker darker tone. So I, I'm I'm probably about a seven for this one too. Same way. I'm a seven. I really enjoyed their animated stuff. And um, so, and I enjoyed the, that episode of the what if, and they really left it open. I felt like they're going to do more for this when ta-da, there it is. So Yeah. I wonder if it's going to tie in from that episode or if it's going to be its own thing, right? Like, is it going to be similar animation? I would assume they're going to do different animation, but there is some potential there for them to like take that storyline and like kind of carry it over into a whole series. Um, or is it, or are they going to forget that that existed and kind of start brand new? Mm-hmm. Um, Next is uh, Agatha. House of Harkness, this WandaVision spinoff will focus on fan favorite Agatha, played by Katherine Hahn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the, her character was awesome. I thought WandaVision was amazing. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not sure if she was like my favorite part of WandaVision, right? Like, she's very cool and it was a great twist. Um, you know, near the end, I don't mean to get too spoilery if you did not watch WandaVision. However, um, she's having her own show. I probably keep this around a seven. Um, purely based on how much I liked WandaVision, right? Like, I don't know if her storyline it by itself is going to hold up. However, if they bring in a lot of Doctor Strange elements, I'm going to be, that's going to elevate and get even higher. So I think I'm still at about a seven with Agatha. I'm a little bit higher. Uh, I love Catherine Hunt. And, and as you touched on, she was a great part of WandaVision. Um, I think this could be Marvel's move towards like Midnight Suns, like the supernatural part of the MCU. Mm-hmm. Like we know Blade's coming too, right? Yeah. So I, I feel like if they start... You, they, if they use this show to explore more of the supernatural, uh, this could have like bigger tie-ins. Yeah. Yeah. So I was a seven to you said that more supernatural. <laughs> I could totally mm-hmm. get into. So yeah. What, what did you, what was your score, Nick? Uh, I gave her, I gave this one an eight. Yeah. I think because you just said that an eight and <laughs> Nick, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Agatha in the comics wasn't necessarily always a, villain or bad person right yeah she's actually more of like a mentor character yeah yeah so it'd be cool to see that side of her it's got to be something like that they couldn't have her the main villain i wouldn't think but i guess i guess we'll see well and real quick though not to like go too far off track here nick mentioned midnight suns that game by the way i cannot wait for midnight suns i like slay the spire meets like XCOM meets like Mid, I'm so in like all in on midnight suns the game yeah a a 10 who's making it (laughs) That's for Axis, the guys it's who did it. The okay, did then I'm in. I just want to make sure it wasn't like Square Enix or something like that. All right. Hey. <laughs> Are okay. we going to fight our first episode? Well, hold this on, is hold going on. down. Didn't they make the Marvel video? Who made the Marvel video game? That, yeah, that was, they did. That was they, Avengers, they did. Yeah, that, that was not All good. right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ironheart. Don't give me. Uh, Square Enix <laughs> makes amazing stuff, but not always. All right. Um, so next is Ironheart. So not much has been shared about this series, but it'll feature Dominic Thorne as Riri Williams, a genius inventor who creates the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man. Uh, this is a nine for me, May- maybe 10. I cannot wait for more Iron Man stuff. Like an Ironheart, like it's going to be an amazing lead character. Like I cannot wait to see her suit in action, who she fights, what the storyline is going to be. If it leads into like new Avengers movies, like this Ironheart series, I think is one of my most anticipated things on this entire list. Um, so I'm going to keep this probably like at a nine, but they it could, it's probably a 10. I don't know. <laughs> Ironheart's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for Ironheart. Maybe not as much, maybe not as excited as Matt, but like, I think this is another solid eight for me. Uh, like uh, Ruby Williams is a cool character. Ironheart's cool, and you know, Iron Man left a huge void. Like Tony Stark left a huge void in MCU. So it'll be interesting to see other characters because they've kind of explored it from, with Spider Man, but not with other characters yet. So I like I, I'm interested to see that. I very much like Spider Man. I'm kind of surprised they picked this because the comic series did not do well at all, and uh, so I don't know much about her. Uh, but I've heard that potentially Tony Stark may be a hologram. That would be kind of cool to see him come back and help her out and stuff. So I'm not as high on as y'all. I'm probably about a six or so, but that's because okay. me being more ignorant, uh, and not having read too much about it. I just know it didn't do well in the comics. It's like, well, why didn't it do well? So uh, yeah, you know, I, we'll see. I get you there. I'm, I think for me, it's just like, I know 
I'm just such a big Iron Man fan of even the films, like in his armor and his suits. And just like, I cannot wait to see that in more modern setting. Like, just keep that going. Like more, more Iron Man stuff, please. Iron Heart stuff. I am Groot. This series will, uh, this will be a series of shorts that follows baby Groot's glory days growing up and getting into trouble. Yeah, that's. A, I mean, this is this is a nine. I mean, it's shorts. Uh, wow. I have I have a seven year old son who absolutely loves these two characters, you know. And uh, Andy and I are gonna watch this like crazy. Um, and yeah, we'll probably in being shorts. Uh, he he's gonna watch these over and over again. Um, we love these characters, so yeah, I'm excited. Actually, I didn't even know it was shorts until you just mentioned it, which I think probably bumped me up from like an eight to a nine. <laughs> if I can get in and out, then I'm I'm even happier. All right, I'm gonna I'm go the opposite way, and I also have young kids. But for me personally, this is maybe like a two or a three. Oh, uh, like I, I hate to give it a back score, but like I, I'm not thrilled for this. Like it, it'll be fun. It's it's gonna be cute. I'll watch it with my kids. Sure, but I'm not super invested with this. And like if it didn't, if this didn't come out, I would feel the same way. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Nick. I'm kind of apathetic. Um, so here, I'll split the difference and say like four or five. Okay. Um, like I said, it'll be cute. I'm sure the shorts will be funny and I'll get a kick out of them. But it's one of those things, for me, it's probably going to be a throwaway thing. Oh, that was humorous. I never think about it again. So exactly. Yeah, sure. I, I get that. Like, But I know like the Disney Plus has a lot of shorts in like, the Pixar universe. Mm-hmm. They're all fantastic. Like They're all really, really great. So that just makes me more excited for a group one of those spider-man freshman year this upcoming animated series follows peter parker on his way to becoming spider-man in the mcu with a journey unlike we've ever seen and a style that celebrates the character's early comic book roots interesting uh so obviously this is not going to be into the spider-verse right like i mean as far as animation wise uh however I'm very excited about this. I think seeing like Tom Holland's Spider-Man, um, we'll see like Uncle Ben probably, right? Like we haven't yet seen that side of his story uh, and anything like early of that. And w- the animation style has me really interested because what is early Spider-Man comics going to look like? Are we talking like Ultimate Spider-Man or like earlier than that? Like, I don't know. I, I mean, this is probably an eight or nine for me. I love Spider-Man. So I'm, I'm excited for more animated Spider-Man. Man, I feel bad, but I'm I'm kind of like at a three on this one too. Uh, <laughs> like I, I love Spider Man, but how many times have we seen the Peter Parker in high school story? How many times like do we have to watch Uncle, Uncle Ben die? Right? Or even talk about it, you know, <laughs> they might not show uh, it though. They might not. Know, like, I mean, hard uh, responsibility, right? Um, like, uh, and again, I'll probably watch this with my kids, and they'll probably love it. But for me personally, I'm, mm. okay, I, I totally get Nick's point, and. It's it's member berries for me because I grew up watching Spider Man cartoon from the sixties, and then when the uh, and, uh, what was it in the eighties when it was Spider Man, Ice Man, yep. and Firestar, yeah, yeah, Superman and Spider Man and Friends or something like yeah, that. Spider Man and Friends, yeah, it was Firestar yeah. and Ice Man, yeah, yeah. And then there was another resurgence uh, in the nineties. So for some reason, I just like the Spider Man cartoons, and um, so yeah. I'm gonna, probably going to put it at an eight, but. Nick has a very good point that can make me move it down to a six or seven because if it's a rehashing of the exact same thing, we've don't seen you go moving your times. score because of Nick. Don't you go moving your score because of Nick. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Last because I get to hear y'all's thoughts. Again. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to land in the middle. No, listen, this is going to be fun though because we're going to watch these things. We're going to come back to this video. We're going to see like where we where we thought we were and like where we were after. Like we could be, I could be opposite. I'd be like, man, that show was not good. But who knows? We'll see. It'd be fun to come back to this later. Echo, this live action series will serve as a Hawkeye spin, right, I have a off, guess, of, <laughs> spin off of sorts, uh, starring, oh boy, Alqua, A L A Q U A Cox, as Maya Lopez, who will be introduced in Hawkeye. Okay. So this is a Hawkeye story? Nick, so, who look, is Echo? Nick, you start. Uh, Echo one. is actually, she actually was like a Daredevil. Uh, romantic interest but she has okay. kind of like different superpowers she, uh she's deaf mute so that's why you know she was kind of like okay. you know related to daredevil but she has like super agility uh and she can uh i can't remember what the, the exact power set but she she has like very strong senses so she was kind of like an analog to daredevil okay where, where do you where do you land on this one nick uh i'm pretty high on this one because uh she actually had like this great arc with in the moon knight series so i'm wondering if they're actually 
doing that they're going to do something concurrently with moon Knight. so i'm actually like an eight or a nine for this one i'm really excited for echo um okay so i my in familiarity is going to bring this one down for me only. And that could totally change. Like, I'm going to say, I'm going to land at like a four on this, but this is just because I don't, I don't know it at all. Um, so as trailers come out, it may go up to five or six. And then as I watch the episodes, you know, obviously I'm hoping that's going to, you know, change my thoughts, but just me not knowing this is going to leave me a little, uh, be passing this, this announcement. Right. And I'm the exact same way because I know so little. I'm just going to go strack, uh, smack dab in the middle. Five. It may yep. be amazing. It may not be good. So it's like yeah. I'm just going to put it right there. I'm not expecting anything. So right. I, I'm saying it could be amazing. I'm not expecting it to be amazing. I'm not expecting it to be bad. I'll just enjoy it for what it is and maybe it'll blow my mind. Yes. Yeah, sure. uh, one MCU tie-in. She was actually Ronin for a while. Like, you know how oh, Hawkeye cool. was Ronin briefly yeah, yeah, in yeah. Uh, Infinity War Endgame? So. She, I, I wonder if they're going to go with that angle where she actually takes over the Ronin persona. Now, I did hear that in the new Hawkeye series coming out, they're going to address like all the people he killed while he was Ronin, um, which could get pretty dark for like his yeah. kind of like story. Well, boy, the the way they cut that trailer did not make the show look dark at all. The first trailer yeah. to me, yeah, I was like, a funny oh, this is going to be dark and, and and gritty. And then the second one they released is like, no, this this doesn't look. <laughs> this is a Christmas. This is a Christmas show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think it's mostly based off the Matt Fraction run, which if you haven't read it, you have to read it. It's it's an all time great run in comics. I'm glad we got a Very comic cool. expert on here. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, uh, <laughs> what if season two? I, I'm a I'm a DC guy, by the way, so I'm more of a DC. So if we ever okay. talk about DC stuff, that's which we will. We're gonna we're not just a Marvel show by any means. This is just today's announcements. It's just that. Marvel is kind of going on all cylinders now with their shows and uh, yeah. DC's trying to catch up, but that's a whole nother, it's one other video. All right. That's a whole uh, other show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Marvel studios. Uh, what if season two, by the way, Marvel yeah. studios animated series returns for a second season. The log line says after enlisting the guardians of the multiverse to stop infinity Ultron, the watcher returns in season two of what if to meet new heroes, explore strange new worlds. Okay, more strange new worlds. It's like there's no way they would copy the Star Trek line uh, in the MCU's <laughs> ever-expanding multiverse. So here, I'll go first. I haven't gone first yet. I go love first, Marty. What If series, mm-hmm. uh, Season 1, so I'm going to put it at an 8 or 9 and expect the same sort of uh, quality. Um, Nick, you go next. All right, uh, I'm going to go with 6. I liked What If, but I felt like it was a very safe series. Mm. They didn't really do anything crazy. Uh, and because it's What If... You have you can go crazy, and they have in the comics. Like some of the storylines are just like absolutely bonkers, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. what if Captain America was actually Red Skull, things like that. Yeah, Where it, they took like real risks and. What was the Wolverine one? Remember, there was a What If Wolverine one too. Do you remember that? Like one of the most famous What If covers had Wolverine on the front. Um, I'll have to look that up and see what it is. But we're, it would, I mean, nobody even seen like Wolverine in any of the What Ifs yet. Uh, we're, well, we're, we're, well, X Men are not, not in there. Like, haven't been brought into the MCU yet. We're getting to that. But, yeah, we're getting close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. where, where did you land on this? You said six. Yeah, I'm a six. I'm, I think I'm a, I'm a six as well. And that's just like basically like my – I was a 10 for the first season because I the idea of what if like when I was going crazy. I'm like, oh, man, this cool animation, crazy stories. And I thought what if was really, really good. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I needed a season two, though, you know, like I mean – Maybe they'll prove me wrong and they're going to continue the story and then introduce new timelines and whatever they want to show, um, which we can have some really cool episodes out of here. But like, I'm not I'm not sure right now I needed it. So Marvel's got to prove that I, I needed this. All right. Uh, next is uh, Miss Marvel and the Miss Marvel teaser. By the way, there was a little short teaser on Disney Plus's channel day, it's yep. like a seven eight minute thing, and I did happen to see the teaser of some of these. This is one that it's like a, uh, it's like it's like six it's like at thirty seconds or yeah, 60 it's super yeah, short. Uh, Iman Vellani brings Marvel Comics newcomer Kamala Khan, also known as Miss Marvel, to life. Kamala idolizes Captain Marvel, but laments that it's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world, and that's all in quotes. It doesn't seem to stop her from trying to become a superhero, though. She suits up and gets ready to take flight uh, for the first time. This is going to come out in, in summer of 2022. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to land at about seven for this, uh, maybe even eight. 
And coming back to our previous conversation, it's mainly because of the Avengers game from Square Enix. They did an awesome Miss Marvel story with Kamala Khan, and uh, that got me more excited about this the storyline. So I'm yeah, excited she was to see the best part of that game. She was absolutely, and the story was so good. It was short, and that's the, I think the biggest problem of Avengers game was that you just got through the story, and then it was kind of like a grind fest after that. But yeah, so if, I'm I'm excited because. I want to see more of that story. And I think that the uh, actor they have, she's really great. She looks fantastic as Ms. Marvel. I've seen her costume. It's like perfect. I can't wait to see um, how, what they do with Ms. Marvel. Nick. Uh, I'm a nine on this one. Uh, I love the comic book run. The first, like I read probably maybe the first 20, 25 issues, like the first arc. It was great. It was actually one of the best comics I had read in years. Um, it was just like a nice fresh take on superheroes and we're seeing cut it was like when they're trying to pass the torch to a lot of different characters like miles it was also miles morales mm -hmm. you know and he was so popular they actually brought him in from ultimates uh to the marvel regular marvel continuity so uh, i'm really excited for this one yeah so instead it, so there's a, a tabletop game uh from fantasy flight games called marvel champions and the, there's a deck, a hero deck for Miss Marvel, and that's about my own exposure to Miss, exposure to Miss Marvel. Uh, yeah. So I don't know much about her. The teaser I saw today really didn't help me at all. And a friend of mine said this, and now I can't get it out of my head. He, he said it looks like the iCarly of the Marvel Universe. And once he Ouch. said that, Ouch. I went, Ouch. oh, that's true because no. it's it looks like it's uh, uh, teenagers and stuff, and you know, in high school and everything. So for me, I'm probably going to land on a five again because I'm just, I, I don't know. It could be amazing. Sure. It, it may not be that great. So for me, I'm not as interested in it. And then when he said, I Carly, I just never can't get that out of my head because the way the trailer was cut, yeah, it, it kind of looks like, you know, a bunch of friends hanging out and one of them's trying to become a superhero. I don't know. I, I think out of these, maybe alongside of Ironheart, possibly, I, well, maybe She-Hulk, you know, we haven't really gotten that far. I think Ms. Marvel has the best opportunity for uh, cameos from other heroes. Mm. So I think we could see some pretty big crossover come into this show, uh, possibly. Yeah. Speaking of She-Hulk, uh, in the She-Hulk teaser, uh, Tatiana Mas Maslani, Maslani, the person, uh, the actress who played an orphan black. The orphan black, yeah. Uh, plays Jennifer Walters, a normal lawyer who also has the ability to transform into She-Hulk. But thankfully, she has her cousin Hulk, uh, Mark Ruffalo, will be in this again, um, to guide her through it. He explains that, quote, these transformations are triggered by anger and fear. So she breaks the fourth wall and gives us the big warning. Don't make me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. And even though this snippet doesn't say it, they say this will be a comedy. And that also... Uh, the guy who played Abomination, uh, Tim, Tim Roth, Tim Roth Tim is going to yeah. uh, uh, be in this also. So I'll, I'll kick okay. this one off. Yeah. Uh, I think She-Hulk is extremely entertaining. Uh, she is funny. I'm glad that they said this is going to be a comedy. I would like to see how just a straight comedy kind of works for them. So I'm, this is a nine for me. And I think I think this actress is going to do a really good job with this character. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm at a, probably an eight for this myself. I, I'm very excited. I didn't know it was going to be a comedy, but that makes me even more excited. Plus we get more Hulk. Like we get Hulk and she Hulk. Like, uh, it looks like Mark Ruffalo's in it. Um, you know, from the trailer. Right. And, yep. um, they, uh, you know, to, and I'd love to, I can't wait to see the two of them together and how they interact together. Um, I feel like that's going to be a really fun chemistry. Uh, and then seeing how she Hulk comes into the whole universe. Like that's just really exciting to me. So, and back on uh, Marvel champions, the card game, her, her, uh, her deck is really fun to play too. So she Hulk's pretty awesome. One of my favorite decks to play by far. She Hulk. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so amazing. super great. <clears throat> yeah. This one's an eight for me too. Uh, like the seminal she Hulk comic book run was the John Byrne run. And like, she broke the wall all the time. This is, way before Deadpool was even a thing, right? This is like 80s and 90s. So she kind of like pioneered that type of yeah. humor. So I'm, I'm, again, also very glad that this is a comedy. Uh, if they really lean into it, th this could go from like an 8 to like a 10 for me. Nice. Awesome. All right, uh, Moon Knight. It's always a good thing to get more Oscar Isaac, and he's finally stepping into the Marvel Universe. Isaac plays Mark Spector, also known as Moon Knights. In the comics, he's left for dead in the desert, but is revived by Egyptian god Khonshu with a mission to serve as protector at nighttime. However, he has a disassociative personality disorder that makes him take on different personalities. In the teaser, Mark says, I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. Another voice says, the voice in your head, it devours you, accompanied with footage of Isaac suiting up as uh, Moon Knight in the evening. Coming out uh, in 2022. 
Uh, yeah, I'll start with Moon Knight. I am, I mean, yeah, more Oscar Isaac is great. I think he's an awesome actor. Are we getting to the point where there's too much Oscar Isaac? I don't know. Uh, you know, I think we're like, he's not quite Chris Pratt level of exposure yet, but like he's getting oh, there. I didn't mention he's, even though he's played by Oscar Isaac, he's voiced by Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah yeah moon moon knight is 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 voiced by chris pratt but like you know but so again he's great I, I i think he's an outstanding actor um this is obviously going to be kind of similar to like a batman the marvel batman story right i mean but um i he's, i'm gonna he's, he's crazy batman is basically the, the pitch right <laughs> he's crazy batman so if you pitch me crazy batman with oscar eyes like i'm gonna say i'm about eight interested in this and it could be a lot of fun yeah, th- this is a nine for me, um, which could go uh, up or down depending on how they execute it. But the snippet that they showed was actually pretty dark. It was. Uh, I'm ac- I'm actually surprised that Disney Plus is going there because Moon Knight is a pretty dark character. Like he's actually in some ways in, like an even more extreme version of Batman. Yeah. So I mean, Crazy Batman is probably not the best way to express it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, he's a, he's a really cool character. Uh, he has some minor superpowers, like he's stronger in the moonlight, that kind of thing. Um, but they've actually kind of gone back and forth on the comics too. Like, does he actually have superpowers? Like sometimes it's been established that he has, but other times mm-hmm. it's just like, that's just another expression of like his, um, his delusions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if they get dark with it, this could be a 10 for me. So for me, this is my most anticipated. It's a 10 with a stipulation that this becomes Disney's most mature show they've made, which is what worries me is right. that, this could lean into R-rated territory if done like the comics. And if they don't, I don't I'm not sure they can do this character the same service that it deserves. But I'm gonna go 10 because the cut of the trailer did look pretty dark. You mm-hmm. know, contrast the She-Hulk which had more of the comedy, contrast that with Miss Marvel, which has more of the fun teenage sort of thing. So it looks like you know several different styles of shows, which I appreciate. I'm glad not every show is just cookie cutters of each other with a new character. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, 10 for me. Awesome. Finally, X-Men 97. Marvel Studios is rebooting the 90s classic X-Men. Da-da-da-da-da-da. I just had to do it. Uh, with a new Thank title, you. according to uh, a website, The Wrap, the series picks up right where the original series ended. It'll feature many of the original voice actors coming back, and this is in 2023. Never would have expected this in like a hundred years. <laughs> no, it, it, I, I know, right? I'm going to start because I'm going to say 10. This is my most, ex- this was the biggest announcement from this for me. The original X-Men cartoon that they're following this up from is like my childhood. We, My sister and I watched this every Saturday morning. Um, I, I will admit I have not yet went back and watched all of it on Disney Plus when they put it back on there. I have watched a few episodes to kind of get that nostalgic, you know, just that that nostalgic kick. Uh, and I tried to show it to Andy and he kind of got bored quick. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but it, I, I loved it. So I have tons of questions, though. Are they going to keep the same animation style? Is it going to be like that? But is it going to be um, maybe a little more modernized, right? Like maybe smoother frame rates or, but I can't like bring back the old costumes, bring back the old storylines, dive back into Age of Apocalypse, dive back into like Magneto, like just give it, give it all to me. Like just put it in my veins. Give me X-Men 97 like today. It's not to like 2023 though, right? Like we got to wait. Yeah. It's we have, to- yeah. So I'm going to be sitting at a 10 for a while, but maybe I'll watch through all, because if it picks up right where it left off, this will be a good chance to maybe do a rewatch. Where did it end? Because I can't remember. Um, again, I, when I when I rewatched some of the episodes, I only watched the first couple, so okay. I right. couldn't even tell you like the ending. But maybe we'll come back and talk about that because okay. I'd love to rewatch it. There you go. Nick, yeah, for me, this is like an eight or a nine. Uh, like I, I, I'm excited. Like like Matt said, this is a, a formative part of my childhood too, right? Saturday morning cartoons. Um, but I'm a little worried. Like. They bring back some of the voice actors, but are they bringing back the same writing staff? Like the same creative team? I, I actually don't know. And I think that'll be really important because one of the reasons that made the original so, show so great was that it had very mature storylines for a Saturday morning cartoon. So mm-hmm. uh, like, I'm a little, I, I'm hopeful, but maybe a tiny bit skeptical. So I'll land on an eight. It's mm, a good point. I'm going to, I'm going to stay at a nine uh, for a lot of the same uh, reasons you guys said. Um, I, I would love to see the same animation style 
just so it almost like carries from one to another. I'm sure it may be cleaned up, better frame rates, et cetera, but it'd be cool if it was, I assume it was hand-drawn back then. I don't know if they'll do hand-drawn again. Um, original voice actors is cool. And it's funny, um, it's, when people who've gone and seen the movies that tell the, the Phoenix storyline, I say, skip that, go watch the X-Men animated series if you want to see the Phoenix storyline done right. And also yeah. Juggernaut. Like Juggernaut was also terrible in X Men Three. Yeah, that's true. And well, uh, and also, uh, if you haven't seen it, go look up the video of the person who composed the theme song and how he did it and everything. Because come on, it's still one of the most iconic theme songs of all time. I mean, literally, you can hear the first four seconds, and uh, you know exactly what it is. And what's interesting is, uh, you know, it has the uh, in the in the beat. Uh, of the song um, where it has like a gong, like a bell. Uh, at, at some point, it's just like gong. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about that part and what he did. And he said, that's that's what everybody comes up to me and asks, how did you come up with the idea to do that? Anyway, I'm into music and stuff like that. So it was really interesting. Uh, but just look that. at the screen. How cool is it? Like when you were looking at the screen of announcements to finally see the X-Men name up there, right? Like, yeah. I mean... Like, even though it's, the, you know, re, re bringing back this cartoon, what, when, where, when are we going to see X-Men enter the Disney, you know, Marvel era? Like, I want a new X-Men movie, I guess is what I'm saying. Like, I, I think pretty soon, like, th this is them dipping their toes into the water, right? I think so, too. And we're, yeah. we're going to see Fantastic Four pretty soon, soon too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well. And I like everybody saying you, the the whole multiverse is getting ready to open up, so it's going to be easy for them to weave those in just through the multiverse. Because yeah. then it's easy to explain where they've been all this time. Well, they're in a yeah. different universe. I don't know. G give yeah, me an hold everybody with my division, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, That's true. Well, exactly. then give me if if we're going crazy, give me an X Men versus Street Fighter cartoon. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Like the video game. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there we go. All those brand new shows just dropped today. And that doesn't even touch uh, the other ones that uh, Star Wars universe. And you said there was maybe possibly, I know there's like a under the hood Boba Fett document uh, documentary uh, mm -hmm. that's coming out. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're still waiting for that. Even though Hayden Obi -Wan. Christensen is going to be on it. And, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, oh, you got to have him back though. Like he's got to be there. Anyway, you got to, <laughs> doesn't mean i like it i think you do I, <laughs> you got to uh and then obviously there's a bunch of other like i said other disney uh plus mm -hmm. uh still going going on so before we get out of here uh when it comes to tv uh what are you guys watching right now that you would recommend or just enjoying oh yeah let's uh real quick what have i been, like lately um i have been binge watching and getting caught up on attack on titan uh attack on titan is just such a great show it's been obviously going into its fourth and final season or the second half of it but i'm trying to get caught up before that comes out such a great show i've uh, been binge watching that and video game wise i've been playing um well we i, I just finished metroid dread um i don't know about these two slackers but i finished metroid Blackout. dread and um i started playing forza horizon uh the new one and it's outstanding. It's such a fun racing game. So that's the that's the media stuff that I've been uh, working on. How about you, Nick? Uh, for me, uh, rewatching Keep Your Hands Off Izoken. It's an anime series about a group of young kids who start their own anime making club. So that's cool. Uh, and I guess I'm on an anime kick because I just beat Scarlet Nexus, which is oh, the game yeah. that I, I beat instead of uh, going back to Dread. So it's a great game. Well, I can blame Matt for that. Matt's the one who pushed me into that. I did. It's an awesome game. It took me 23 years to do it, but I finally watched Cowboy Bebop, uh, the yeah. anime version, because uh, at the time of this recording, one week from now, the live action version is coming on Netflix. And I want to be able to either appreciate it for what it <laughs> is or get upset at it for what it should have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, we'll be back. We got to, we'll, we'll come back on here. We'll talk about Cowboy Yeah, for Bebop, sure. For we'll sure. do a, we'll I'm, I'm going to have thoughts. I know. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll, how about if we do this? We'll watch all of the live action, then get back together and do yeah, a yeah, spoiler we'll do full uh, discussion of the two because y'all, after that, those final two episodes, I was floored. It's like, I was oh, really less, enjoying yeah. it, but when it got to the final two episodes of the anime, it's like, I get it. I understand why this is so well loved because, oh, oh, 
I can't. I can't say anything. Can't say anything. <laughs> it tells. It tells some great stories. If there's anyone out there that yeah that hasn't seen Cowboy Bebop yet, try not to watch the live action first. Try to go back and just watch the anime and then compare it and maybe watch with the live action uh, because the original just ho- still holds up so so well. It's perfect. Yep. And uh, I think you guys will agree. Uh, the dubbed version, which I usually am against, is actually a good version. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Yeah, it's, I watched it dubbed. Yep. Yep. yep, I did watch it dubbed, and I thought the dub was good. Video games, I'm still working on Dread, trying to finish that up. But I did crank up uh, um, Forza Horizon 5. So Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the one, yeah. Maybe you and I can get on them and have a convoy sometime. Oh, and, we're gonna. And, we'll, and we'll do it. Play some multiple. Hey, get on our Twitch channel, and we'll do we'll, uh, stream uh, some Forza on there. How about that? Oh, man. We're, we got some fun stuff planned for this channel. And thanks, everybody, for coming out and hanging out with us. If if you made it this far into the video, then obviously we kept you around for long enough. But uh, we have lots of cool stuff planned, um, not just about TV shows. We're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about movies. We're going to be bringing on guests. We're going to be bringing some of our friends from the tabletop industry over uh, who maybe just want to break from talking about you know, board games and maybe talk about something else. So, uh, so thanks everybody for, for watching if you're still here. Yeah. And if you are, please, uh, give us a subscribe, uh, click that like button down below. If you, if you would like to, if you enjoyed it, if you have ideas and other topics you would like to hear about, I mean, uh, like Matt said, we'll have a, a link to our Twitch channel so you can go watch us play some video games over there. We'll have some discussions here on YouTube. We're talking about doing top fives. I mean, it's just unlimited. I'm just so happy to be working with you guys to give me an outlet to talk about all this stuff that I love to talk about. Likewise. It's sure. great. Yeah. And, and uh, Twitter is at Mediavania show. So if you got Twitter, go follow us there. And I'm usually on there. We're, we're all on there chatting away. So uh, you can reach out through Twitter too. And as we sign out, I'm Marty. I'm Matt. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching everybody.